Welcome back. Since I gained a lot of new subscribers recently, I figured it would be the right thing to show you my gun collection. We got blank guns, we got air guns, we got pellet guns, we got airsofts, we even got a slingshot. But there are no real firearms on this table. For the viewers that came for those, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I think it may still be interesting to see what a normal citizen out of a country like Germany can legally get if he is above the age of 18. I will only say a few words to each of these, since I do plan to make proper reviews in the future. By the way, I made sure that all these guns are empty and safe to be handled. Well, let's get to it. I guess we start with flag guns. First up is my 1911. It looks and feels very good, but it's more of a collection piece rather than something you would actually shoot a lot. By the way, these blank pistols all chamber the same rounds. One thing that really bothers me with this one is the magazine. The follower of the magazine sits too far up and the slide actually gets stuck on it. You won't encounter malfunctions if there are enough rounds in the magazine. But because of the problem I mentioned, you do run into malfunctions on the last few rounds pretty often. Next blank gun is the M&P 9C. Not too much to say about this one. An overall great blank gun, very reliable, very concealable as well, and it also comes with two different magazines. Blank guns are quite the big thing here in Germany, and I think we all know why. It's just the closest thing to a real gun. So these are often bought by people who want to get a feel of what it's like to operate a real gun for firing firework ammunition on New Year's Eve or for self-defense. Even though the only thing that comes out of the barrel are hot gases. But at short distances, these can be really devastating as well. But the main purpose for them in a self-defense scenario is to scare away the potential threat. Blank guns can be bought by anyone who is above 18 or older. For carrying these around in public, you would need a permit called Kleiner Waffenschein. But that is very easy to get. You just put in some information on a website for 10 minutes, pay from 50 to 100 euros and you're done. If you carry around a blank gun in public, shooting it is only allowed if your life or someone else's is in danger. Now to the Zoraki 914. I was a bit skeptical with blank guns from Zoraki at first because they aren't direct replicas of real guns. But what I found out and what I also heard from people is that these are one of the most reliable blank guns out there. This one is a very popular model. It just checks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. It's very compact. It's got a manual safety. It's even got a safety feature in the hammer. And as mentioned, it's super reliable. I do like the engravings as well. And for this model you can also get an extended magazine. That way 25 instead of 14 rounds can fit into this gun. Now to my only blank gun revolver. It's also from Zoraki and I'm also overall very pleased with it. I haven't run into any more functions with this one. But I guess that's just the nature of revolvers. I also have a P30 by HK. And I honestly can't say anything bad about this one either. It doesn't run smooth with every ammo, but if you get the right one, that isn't a problem. And I do have to say, out of all my guns, the grip on this one has to be the best. The last gun is the P99 by Walter. Also a very popular model and I do really like the feel and aesthetics of it. Only downside is that just like with the P30, you need the right ammunition for it to run smoothly. What the hell? Oh my god, no way! This one also comes with an extended magazine. And I know this obviously isn't a gun, but I figured I'd show you anyway. This is a silencer for playing guns. It 
came with a few adapters so it will fit multiple models. I'm currently editing a video where I tested this out, so stay tuned for that. Now that the blank guns are out of the way, I will continue with some spring-loaded guns. Like this L69 for example. This one is an old airsoft from my brother, which just was collecting dust. So I put some tape on it, added a scope, and now it looks quite good I think. As I mentioned it's spring-loaded, which is quite nice, since you don't have to worry about your CO2 cartridges or green gas. It has only around one joule, which isn't that much, but with the long barrel you can still hit quite accurate. We also have these old pellet guns, which I don't know too much about, since I was still a kid when we got them. But I once measured that they have a power of around 7.5 joules, which is also the maximum power that you are allowed to have with these kind of guns. Everything else you can see on this table is either powered by green gas or CO2. Let's start with my collection of Glocks. I have a gas blowback Glock 19 by VFC. It feels quite realistic since it's manufactured really well. This Glock 19 has a power of around 1 joule. It also has a special place in my heart because it's the first gun that I bought. The blowback adds a bit of kick and it served me well for some fun shooting in the garden. I have a 19X with 10 colors as well. This one is CO2 powered and has around 1.5 joules. This one here isn't an actual Glock, but it basically is. It's called the VSF-19 and it's made completely out of metal. It also runs on green gas and has a power of around 1 joule. I basically got this because it comes optic ready and was therefore the only pistol I was able to mount a red dot on. I have a Dan Wesson 8 inch revolver shooting 6mm BBs out of these shells. It's quite high in power for an airsoft with around 3 joules and therefore you can have a lot of fun with it. This would be a good collection without some cowboy guns. I recently got two of those, but I haven't shot them yet, so I can't say too much about it. One of them is my Colt Single Action Army Revolver. A really beautiful piece, looks and feels very good. It is CO2 powered and has around 3 joules. It also has these shells where you can put the pellets into. I'm very excited to test this one out, but that has to wait until it gets a bit warmer outside. I also plan on comparing these two revolvers in the future. They both have around 3 joules of power, but one shoots 6mm BBs and the other one shoots 4.5mm pellets as well as steel BBs. I guess that would make quite an interesting video. My second cowboy gun is this lever action rifle. It also has these shells where you can load either 4.5mm BBs or 4.5mm pellets into. What's interesting about this one is that it ejects the rounds. It should also have around 7.5 joules. These last three air guns you can see at the end of the table are all by Umarex. They are from the T4E line which stands for training for engagement. They are advertised as paintball guns, as a tool to train handling weapons and also for home defense. But you can ignore that last point, because a maximum power output of 7.5 joules wouldn't stop a serious threat. The first one of the three is a Glock 17. Even though the quality is very good, I still think they are a bit overpriced. It is CO2 powered, it is chambered in caliber 43, has blowback and a power of around 5 joules. And let me tell you another sad fact about the German law. It is illegal to mount any type of flashlight or laser to your guns. 
So your only option left is to get one of these dummy lights. I know they are kind of silly, but they are the only way to show what these flashlights would look like on these pistols. Next up is the T4E TM4. Just like the Glock 17, very good quality, but still a bit overpriced. It is also CO2 powered, chambered in caliber 43, and it has around 6 joules of power. What I like about it is that you can mount a lot of attachments to it. The third air gun of the T4E line is this HDS 68. It is supposed to be a double barrel shotgun. Also CO2 powered, a maximum power of 7.5 joules if you shoot through one of the barrels and if you shoot through both of the barrels, the power gets divided. What's great about this one is that you can almost put everything you can imagine into these barrels as long as it is in caliber 68. It is also much cheaper than the rest of the T4E line, which is definitely a good thing. Last but certainly not least is this slingshot. I know it is not a gun, but I still wanted to put it in here. Reason being that out of everything you can see here, this one has the most power. Also, if I am informed correctly, these can be bought even if you are under 18. And you can theoretically carry them with you in public. But if this same slingshot had an arm extension for support, like some slingshots do, it would be considered a firearm and therefore wouldn't be legal. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But I guess that just sums up Germany. Now that I think about it, it's kind of like the German version of the ATF race rules. Well, those were all my guns. But what's next? One thing that has gained a lot of popularity over the recent years are crossbows. And I do plan to get one of those. I just haven't decided on which crossbow from which company I should get. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you think there is something else I should get, let me know as well. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one. Okay then. Whoa.